So, um, we've already uh, looked a bit at the score interface. Uh, we've looked at the, um, the bottom icons here, and we've you look at the, the bottoms one here. The, the first one that is selected is the device explorer. So this is uh, this window on the left here, and this will list every application and uh, hardware and devices that we will talk to, that SCORE will uh, output to or get information from. Uh, we have a few examples of, of working devices, for example, in the user library. So I'm going to try an example. I haven't tried in a while, actually, but uh, if you go into HTTP devices, you should have border weathers. Uh, you just double click on it and then I, sh I should add it. I go back to the device explorer and then I should have a working path here. So Bordeaux, I can just trigger it, and now okay, that works. So this is a little uh, a little device that just goes online and gets me the temperature and the humidity and the wind uh, in Bordeaux. I'm in Bordeaux right now, so this is a, just a little device to get uh, some uh, uh, meteorological uh, information. You know, you can use that in a in a piece. I imagine there's some creative use for it, but uh, uh, this is just to show that we can get some information from a web page, for example. Uh, I'll show the steps again. So I go into the user library, and in the devices here, I can choose HTTP. So HTTP is the protocol to enables me to get uh, data to or from a web page. And if I double click on the device, it will just show add device. Uh, the selected protocol is HTTP. The name is border weathers. I can edit that if I want. And then there's a little piece of code here that we won't get into uh, today, but this is the actual, um, the actual device. This is how the device is written. And I can just add this. And now I go back into the device explorer and I have it here. I'll actually remove this device. I'm not going to use that today. So now that we are, uh, we've seen what uh, can be done in the Device Explorer, uh, the next uh, little tab here is the Process window. We'll go back to this one. Then we have the User Library. Uh, then on the bottom here, we have just um, a personal project file. We also have the history, so you can see every actions that you've done in the software listed here. And you can uh, very easily uh, go back to uh, time. For example, I go back to when I first loaded the device. And now if I go back in here, I can see that uh, Border Weathers is, is back in again because I just went back in time. Uh, it's just like I did a few uh, Control Z and went back in, in time. So uh, instead of doing Control Z uh, 10 times in a row, you can just find uh, your action here and, uh, and jump um, anywhere you want. It's an infinite uh, undo and redo uh, in score. And then you have a little message log. So this will be useful for debugging and seeing if everything runs smoothly and what is coming into score and what is getting out of score. Uh, so that's for the left window. Then we have the main window where we'll actually be uh, drawing, um, if you will, or writing the scenario. It can be a scenario, it can also be just other processes. We can actually remove this scenario right here. Uh, by default, it gives you a scenario process, but we can just have like one sound file or one synth or one automation instead of the scenario. Uh, scenario is just a process like any other in SCORE. I'll show you that in, uh, in more detail uh, in a second. And then on the, the right over here, you'll have a, a little uh, object uh, window here that'll show you what is selected at the moment. So I've selected the scenario. I can see the scenario is selected. It's the same uh, layout. Um, it's a hierarchy, hierarchical layout of uh, the different object in score. So we can see that the scenario is actually inside the horizontal line here that is just untitled for now, is this line right here, which we call an interval, a time interval. 
And uh, for the different parts that I select, I can see that in the inspector here, different uh, options will then be available to me. So if I just select the interval, I can see that I have a few different uh, interval specific options here. And if I just select the scenario, I have other uh, options right here. And then uh, right on the bottom here, I have a little uh, window that just uh, gives me a little bit of, of uh, documentation. Uh, hopefully we can get uh, more documentation soon uh, on this little part uh, right here. So what we want to look at today is uh, basically the, um, the middle section which uh, really is uh, the crux of score, really is where the layout of, of time and interaction is done inside the scenario mostly, but uh, uh, in general using these uh, very uh, basic uh, objects like the interval, so the horizontal line. Uh, we'll see also what we call states, which are the little points that are at the beginning and at the end of each uh, horizontal line. There's also by default a little one in here in the scenario. And uh, uh, we'll see also uh, the processes, so things that actually can be added inside a horizontal line and, and are ex executed through time. So the interval, the horizontal line, is where time passes. So as I can see, if I play, uh, I can see the line here going green. Uh, so that means that uh, time is passing through this interval and therefore every process is inside this interval is active. So now I have time passing in the main interval, so the main scenario is active. I can uh, populate this main scenario, I can start adding things and they will be executed through time as well. If you don't see an interval going green while uh, time is supposed to pass through, uh, you may have a problem as well. So this gives you a level of uh, uh, acknowledgement if everything is going uh, according to plan.